regularly there's new parties happening in the city with new names, with new crews, so I think it's, it's a really good sign. Lisbon is sitting on a very interesting place which is in the middle of a triangle that connects Europe with South America and mainly Brazil and, and Africa. I feel very fortunate to be in Lisbon in this period right now because I feel I'm surrounded with talent and people doing great things that I sometimes never heard of. Welcome to the jungle. It's been it's been a long a long long ride, long ride with ups and downs. Uh, as far as I remember, <coughs> in the beginning, in the beginning, they, they, it, there wasn't. Of course, there was this euphoria and this this um, this feeling that we were witnessing something fresh and very. New. I'm, I'm talking about the early '90s, maybe. Early '90s, where 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 we were doing like illegal rave parties in in Lisbon. The first big clubs were were playing um, house and techno. There were a lot of attention, uh, even. From port from English media to the to the Portuguese uh, scene, they called uh, Paradise called Portugal. It was like uh, middle of the 90s. There were like uh, underground sound of Lisbon and, the, and the, this label Chaos. It was a pretty important period, and, and it wasn't a massification like it is now. Came here in 2009, and there was like new rave music, maximal music, like a lot of drum and bass. And that kind of got calmer, and I think the scene of like partying like wild. <laughs> and then the house and the techno and grew, grew. The thing just grew like, well, not like in the 90s, but it's, it's kind of people are getting the attention now, like from outside of Lisbon that they want to come here to experience the clubbing scene of Lisbon. There's a lot of DJs and artists that come here and they want to move here and they are here actually. And they are doing stuff already with the Portuguese crowd so it's also, it's, it's really, I think it's boiling now. It's, it's a really cool time to well, play music and records here in Lisbon, I guess. The, the good thing about, about Lisbon right now is that there are people doing everything. Maybe there's not as many events as we would like, so we there's a lot of output, but not so many events. Uh, but that th that is changing, and I think finally, finally, um, maybe because we went through a crisis, uh, which was maybe a good trigger for for creativity. I think people have have kind of, kind of lost the lost this uh, inferiority complex that you used to have towards uh, music, uh, international music. So I think there's not like, ah, we are from Portugal, so our chances of making music and getting known is, are little. I think that that doesn't apply anymore. So that's also a sign that things are very healthy in the music scene right now. There's, a, there's loads of people doing, doing stuff. That's one of the great things I like cities like Lisbon and mostly, of course, specific, specifically Lisbon, is the fact that there are many things inside. It's not only about a country. It's not a city that symbolizes a country. It symbolizes a country, but in a way that, that Portugal was open to the world and was traveling uh, up and down, um, was colonizing, uh, was being uh, invaded. I, I like the fact that the city was, was not a proper Portuguese city at, at at, at some point was North African, so I, I like this kind of a place where, where I think if you come from North Africa or if you come from France or if you come from anywhere, you, you can find your own space within the city. I, I like cities that, that, that have that kind of possibility.
try to do our parties on uh, off locations. Uh, we explore a lot of the city and always try to find the most different and unexpected places to host our, the parties. And our goal, yes, is to educate people and try them, to, to try to, to, to teach them there's more into music than the majority of the, the clubs are, are doing. Uh, that's why we, we tend to, to fuse everything, like venues, DJs, you know, we tend to fuse everything together and I think that's the main thing of our brand is like, it's an experience, you know, it's, a, it's not a party in the club or, or, or in some or the bar or something like that. It's a different, complete different venue that you weren't going to. You know, you work hard every night. You're going to get started. You know, you work hard every night. I think it was um, a really big change when all these uh, parties in the afternoon starts to, to happen. When Luke starts to do parties in the afternoon, and Fuse, Slow, Slow is the older one probably, uh, but uh, LC's music also is an old one, Brunch Electronic. And all these, all these parties during the afternoon, I think it opened the the idea of the electronic scene is only at clubs at night, it's only in cocaine and ecstasy and you know all that stuff. But I think the mind of the people are not just seeing electronic music and the electronic scene as a night thing on, on, on between bricks with a dark room and the loud music. Now you can go to gardens and listen to the same DJ that three months ago was playing on the dark room with low lights and, and everything. And I think at, at five years ago or something, the, the panoramic of the electronic scene in Lisbon has changed, in my opinion, because of this kind of party. It's, the, it's what we call the matinee, that is between uh, three o'clock, for example, and finishes at midnight, okay? It's not a club environment you know because club clubbing is other thing okay i love i love clubbing i go to clubs often but this is a different environment this is more healthy this is uh, within the sun okay uh it's not so so techno if you want so hard this is i think this is the trend this is the trend this is a a, a kind of event it was not uh, was not done in the past and now it's becoming something very perfect because it was something that didn't exist. Five years ago, if you want to have fun, you go, you lunch, or you, you have dinner with your friends and then you go to the club or to the bars or whatever. And that's a normal night, whatever you go. If you go to China, Japan or whatever, you have a club, you have a bar, you... But parties during the day, in the weekend, it was not used here, and now it's becoming something uh, uh, very revolutionary and the trend. You see that mural over there? That was done by a uh, very cool street artist, uh, Lisbon street artist called AKA Corleone. And yeah, it's a great mural, and uh, the guy who did it is actually my flatmate, so <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I always like to say that like Lisbon is sitting on a very interesting place which is in the middle of a triangle that connects Europe with South America and mainly Brazil and, and Africa. So we've got we've been we've been in the middle of this triangle for like hundreds of years and um, and there's and there's been like a lot of um, 
a lot of cultural exchange and with that the music is one of its most powerful expressions so it's super normal for you to listen to Brazilian music, Cape Verdean music and Angolan music just walking out on the streets and uh, in your parents' record collection, so like that, all those types of sounds are very present here. It's not a foreign thing to us, like it's part of the city. And um, so my generation, like this new generation of producers, like when they start making music, they're going to be like all these sounds and all these influences are going to naturally reflect on the music we we all make. So. The big thing that happened that made this scene into a really unique scene was basically the when Buraka Son Sistema started in, in 2006, I think. I grew on an African culture, so I've been listening to that uh, all my life. Uh, not in an electronic way, like Buraka did, but uh, the African movement, you know. I think they picked that and, and they, they introduced, you know, they mixed with electronic, which was a really good result. But I think they had more more visibility uh, outside, and I, I think they were actually seen as uh, the underground ambassadors uh, uh, of Portugal. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the the bass music um, the, is not uh, 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 is not that big mm. as uh, the image that is outside. That was uh, yeah. mirrored outside. But the, the thing is, everything went together at the right time. At right place for them and uh, actually if you want to see a live show of Buraka man the amount of energy they would yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing it, it's amazing. it would blow you away even if you don't like the, the 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 kind of music so it was really easy for them because they were good musicians they were really good on stage they really good producers yeah. you you have like uh, Buraka guys and, and yeah. uh, Moody Necks and uh, you know all these kind of people that producing good music and you know sharing around the world and this is good also for, for, for us and for the electronic scene in, in Portugal. The eclecticism of the city is uh, is visible even in the in the clubs. Also the Afro house scene uh, appeared in the in the outskirts in the in the, the neighborhoods surrounding Lisbon and it never found um, its way into the center into the into the more um, the more uh, institutionalized uh, venues, like uh, public venues, stuff from the, the city hall. The, but finally, that changed, and, and that's that's the sign that the um, the media and the, the the people in government are paying attention to what's being done in the city. There's not that's not much support. There's no subsidies or 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 support for artists uh, starting. But despite that, there's a lot of people doing things. I'm sure that Afrobeat is big, Afrobeat is intense, Afrobeat is here, uh, Afro sounds, Afro uh, house, Afro whatever, the, the Lisbon sounds are happening and they are very exciting and we are, we are here, we exist, we as, as, as people living in the city and, and somewhere be between all of these uh, um, stories happen and phenomenons are, uh, are being built by everyone, even the, the audiences sometimes they prefer to have a new passion and say like oh I Lisbon is my new favorite new city or something like that. Okay, fine, that's great, that's great. Passion is always great. But then let's see if love will happen later on and, 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 and if people are interested on enough to come and to understand better the city. Because it's like talking about Africa as a continent that's really so open. Like, I like African music. The world that's like, like saying, like, I like uh, solar system uh, vibes. It's like, wow, I don't know what you are talking about. That's so much, so many planets inside. But, but if people that come from the outside are, are competent enough to, to take away the hype and the, the labels narrative and the copy paste of the, of the journalists, they will find something honest and, and very interesting. I think the city is, it has lots of good things going on. And Lisbon is unique because the people that are here have a different different context, a different background, and that, that, that's it. We are different anywhere in the world, but 
in the end we are all aiming for I think from what I hear like I was in Colombia for example and you find lots of connections I don't know if they exist because in fact there are historical connections or just because we we are all kind of looking and needing for for kind of a world groove for us to be connected with and to communicate a bit better than we do it uh, through internet because it's, it's too specific but at the same point it's like it's too much pollution and if it's just a vibe just a beat just a heartbeat maybe it's more human i don't know We have a very good relationship with the political, with the current political government, because you know before this government, they were very disconnected with the arts world, and they just cared about austerity, money, banks, austerity, tax, 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 and they cut off the Ministry of Culture, they make it vanish, and these guys, they are exactly the opposite way. They are very much in direct contact with all of us. And like, I'm not saying I don't know them personally. I only know them through work. But they are very approachable. They are very, they are there if we need them. We can talk to them, and they actually reply to our emails. And this, and it, to me, I've never seen this happening before. Like all the former governments, they only care about big buildings, big infrastructure, big money, big investors, and all this, right? And these guys, they don't. They are more connected to the arts world and to the reality. We are the ones who are promoting our identity, because our identity will never, will, will not always be like the old time identity of sardines. You know, like uh, our young people, our young people's culture is not sardines, man. It's techno or kuduru or this kind of thing. You know, this is what the kids like. They don't like like the old uh, folklore music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or fado. <laughs> of course there is young people that also like Fado, but it's not only that, that's the thing, you know. We live in a global world, we're not living in a neighborhood world. Right? <laughs> Portugal doesn't have diamonds, oil, whatsoever. What we have, we have sun, it's not ours, it's from everywhere, from everybody. So what we have, we have our minds. And that's what we have to, to put, that's what the government has to put money on it. Um, and they, they are always forgetting about Portuguese culture. And um, um, we were speaking about it in, in the car, and um, all these people that come to Portugal, they want to see our, our stuff, our, the things we create the things that are unique and that's what makes the difference and uh, what I feel is um, it's like that um, musicians, theatres or whatsoever, they don't have that backup from the government yeah. and we really need it. Yeah, 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 you also see like people from the cinema writers um, because they, they, they're struggling and there's no uh, enough support from, from the government on the cultural side, uh, cultural yeah, side. Uh, what, they, they, then they struggled in the end of the month to pay their accounts, to pay you know the bills, and, and, and when you are worried with all these these problems, you know how I'm gonna pay the bills in the end of the month. You know, uh, the artist life in Portugal is still very very uh, yeah. difficult, and when you have all these problems in your mind, it's difficult to find you know space to be creative. To be creative, of but course. even even with all these these uh, problems uh, and all this lack of support. There's a lot of culture, uh, good culture and good uh, artists uh, in, in all different areas in Portugal. You just have to compare uh, like the, the money that is flowing around countries from Northern Europe or Central Europe compared to the Southern Europe. Just imagine uh, 
like there's so much good music making it being made in Portugal. Just uh, imagine if we had like the the power to uh, get that equipment to do the to do better music or or throw parties in a different way with more creativity. Okay, that can be uh, okay, that can be good. The limitation can be all, always good because limitation brings creativity because you really have to learn how to work with what you have. But imagine if we had uh, the same power, let's say, power in, in terms of getting a better, 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 better equipment. And there goes the bell. <laughs> <laughs>